Today I'm going to show you how to make multiple parts with one program using macros. So you've all probably seen a print like this before. You have a part over here and they give you like a length that's a variable, right? And over here they give you a table and they show you what the possibilities are. You also sometimes have like an optional groove like this, right? Some parts will have it, some parts won't. So today we're going to put all of those parts into one program. Yes, really, all of this one program. So the first thing when writing any macro whatsoever is to put in what you know. In this case, we only have two variables. We have our length and we have an option. So here I put pound 600 as my length and there I could type in any overall length I want. And underneath of it, I put pound 601. This will be our option. And I also wrote in notes there so you can see it. Zero is a no, one is a yes. You'll understand how this works a little bit later. So the first thing this is gonna update is our Tornos machining parameters, which is G800 right here. So you'll notice that B is pound 600. So this B is the length of our part. This is the amount of stroke the machine needs to make the part. After that is your C value. Now C is how far the subspindle comes on to grab the part. And I wanna have a half inch sticking out each time. So I put my overall length in there minus half an inch. So when you change the 600 up here, it's gonna automatically update everything immediately when you press start. All right, so now let's get into the machining. So we're gonna kinda go through this whole program to kinda just show you how the thought process works when writing a macro like this. Even though some of this isn't a macro, I wanna show you everything. So the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna face off and I'm gonna come up and put a chamfer on the front of the part and turn past the first groove because the first groove is always gonna be on there no matter what. Now I'm not gonna go through this too specifically. It's in the comments down below, it's pinned. So if you wanna read this whole program, it's down there for you to go through. After we put the first groove in there, this is where you're gonna really start to see the macros affect your program because everything up until that point is always going to be the same. But now we're doing our second turn section so we need to have the macro affect how long we turn. So that happens right here. I feed to X of 0.375, which is our diameter, all right? That's the diameter of the OD of the part. Then right here, you're gonna see I'm going to Z of minus pound 600 minus 0.250. Well, we know the overall length of our part is pound 600, but there's also a shoulder on our part that's 0.250 long. So I don't wanna feed right here to the end of my part. I wanna stop right before that shoulder and come up and across. So that's exactly what I do by putting the math in here for me. And again, because I changed it at the top, this is gonna update the number it goes to. So then after that, I just feed to the OD of the material, and then I go to Z of my overall length plus 50 thou, again, just using pound 600. That right there is pretty much it as far as the overall length being updated in your program. It's pretty simple how that works. But now we're gonna come into an if statement. All right, so after the turn section, we get to the optional groove. Now earlier I said if pound 601 is a zero, that means no. If it's a one, it means yes. So it says right here, if it's equal to zero, go to one, two, three, four. That's just N one, two, three, four. So if I have it as a zero, it will skip to that line and it won't put the groove in. If it's anything else, which could really be one, two, whatever number you want, as long as it's not zero, it's gonna run this part of the program. To kind of give you an idea of what that looks like when it skips it, it's the same thing as you just saying N one, two, three, four, down and jumping down there. And as you can see here, this is the cutoff preparation part of the program. It's gonna skip the groove. But I wanna show you how the groove was written, so let's go back up to it. The first groove and the second groove are actually programmed exactly the same, except for one difference. I took my overall length, I minus 0.250 for the head, and then I minus 0.1 for where the groove starts. So let's break this down. Where is this groove gonna be in our program? Well, it's gonna change depending on our overall length, because A, which is pound 600, is gonna be the end of the part. We're gonna need to minus the 0.250 for our head here, and then right here I drew a section part of the print that shows you that the groove from this face is 100 thousandths. So that's the equation right there, right? Now you could say, like, why wouldn't you just say pound 600 minus 0.350? I don't like doing that because when I write a program, I want the person behind me to be able to see the math I was doing, to see the way I was thinking. So I put the whole equation in there every single time. So that's why in the program you see pound 600 minus 0.250 minus 0.1 for the location of the groove. This might not make sense to you, but in my opinion, it does make it easier for people to follow your work, which is something you really want to do when you're writing macros because it's really hard to read other people's programs. So always kind of be considered it to the guy who has to follow you. All right, back to the control. So yeah, like I said, the program is pinned in the comment down below so you can read all this, but that is the only difference between the first groove and the second groove. The way I write my programs is gonna be incremental. 
so I can copy and paste things and put them in different parts and not worry about changing a whole bunch of numbers, except for one, which is obviously where the groove starts. And yeah, that's it for the groove. Nothing too crazy going on there. All right, so there's one more part to this macro. I just realized I didn't have to write it because Tornos takes care of these things for you. It's actually really nice when you use their Tysa software. It gives you a template that puts in all these G codes for you that automatically do the part feed out. The subspindle comes up and grabs in the exact position every time, leaves the right amount of stock to face off. It's really convenient. But I'm gonna show you how to write it longhand in case you don't have that ability just to have your machine do everything. So let's do that. So yeah, Tornos' G911 does everything I said. It brings the cutoff up, brings the part out, everything's taken care of for you. But what you would want to do in this case is you'd wanna say something like, so let's just say you would say G zero Z of minus shift bracket, shift pound 600. And then like if your cutoff tool, my cutoff tool in this case is 0.787, which is 20 millimeter. So you'd wanna say like shift plus 0.787. And then I wanna face off 10 thou on the sub. So I'll say shift plus 0.01 and bracket and the block insert. That right there would be pretty much the same thing as what G911 does on Tornos. That's what you'll have to do on your machine. When you bring your cutoff up, you'll have to feed it out to whatever the overall length is, plus your cutoff tool width, plus a little bit for face off. Now on the sub, same thing pretty much. If I go into display two here, and I go to G924, which by the way, Tornos, I gotta give you a lot of love here. This whole formula, this whole template that comes out of Tysis is really easy to use. I'm excited to talk about it in the next Nano video because it made programming that machine really easy. So good job guys, your products rule. All right, so G924 is the part pickoff, right? It's where the sub spindle is gonna go to grab the part. And this is all calculated out of the macros at the top of the program that Tornos has in there already. But I'm gonna write the longhand format just so you know. So all you would do here, you're just gonna say G zero Z of minus shift bracket, shift pound 600 minus 0.5. And what that will do is, is that will leave 0.5 sticking out of the subspindle every time. And that's it pretty much. Nothing too crazy about that. Just to show you how easy this is, we're gonna go through and run every single one of these parts really quickly. I'm gonna show you how little it takes to change your program and why macros make this really easy to do. First one up is the one inch, so let's run that. Memory, cycle start. All right, so we got the one inch one done. Now let's make a two inch one. Down, shift equals two inches, alter, reset, memory, cycle start. All right, cool. Now we have our two inch and our one inch one. Let's make a three inch one. Edit, down to our variable, shift equals three inches. Alter, reset to the top, memory, and select start. And just like that, we have three different parts. That is all it took to make these three parts, which is pretty convenient and pretty simple, which is why you should learn macros. I just changed one number in my program and made my whole variety of parts. That's extremely convenient and extremely easy to do. And this is why I think teaching you guys macros is extremely important. If you learn this, if you master this, it will make your life way easier. You wanna see something cool? Magic. Actual magic is happening right now. See that? They come apart. Now they stick together. That's why you get your tool on center on the sub spindle. You can create a perfectly flat surface and that will stick pretty well too. Yeah, I mean, yeah, you could end the video right there. That's it. Bye, thanks for watching, like and subscribe. By the way, just wanna throw this out there. This is what happens when you run it without coolant and this is what happens when you run it with coolant. So uh, good job, Blazer. your products rule. Yeah, you see how simple that is? This is why you wanna learn macros, people. It will make your life wildly easier. There's nothing difficult about what I just explained. And you can have six parts and one program. And a big reason why I think this is important is because stuff like this happens, right? You have your customer who gives you a list of things to quote, right? So he'll send you this list I wrote out. Oh, dang it, I put it upside down. I didn't write mine upside down. Well, hey. Just want to give a huge shout out to Crache Bear. You want, you, want, you want to try to say it? All right, Crache. Like this could be Crahe, Crate, Crathe, Crathe Buyer. Um, if one of those is close, please comment down below and let me know if I got it. I really tried. I'm terrible at my own language. Please understand that I'm going to be bad at yours too. We really appreciate all your support here at Titans of CNC. If you can, make sure you hit that join button down below. Become a member to our community. Join our Discord. Chat with us every single day and get all sorts of other perks that we offer for you guys. So, anyways, let's get back into this. Let's just flip that. 
Okay, so these are the different part variables your customer's gonna have you quote. So he's gonna say, I want a thousand of the dash one, a 1500 of the dash two, okay? So you're gonna write a program for the dash one and you're gonna run those thousand pieces. And in this program, you're gonna slightly tweak it in, you know, whatever, things might change, not a big deal. But then you're gonna copy and paste that program for this. And then something's gonna happen maybe during this and you're gonna make changes to this. Well, now your first program doesn't have all the updates you've made, unless you can remember everything and go back and change everything and keep it all updated. It's a super big pain. And you're gonna copy and paste this program program and edit it for every single length and every single option. And then you're gonna get down to here where he only wants five of a part. You're really gonna write a program for five parts on a Swiss machine? That is like awful. So what I just showed you can take all of this and put it onto one program and make your life a whole lot easier. Any updates you make, any tool changes you do, anything like that, it's all gonna be permanently kept in the program forever. And this is a really simple version of what macros can do for you. As we dive further and further into these videos, we're gonna be doing a whole lot more than this. So I'm excited to bring that to you guys. So make sure you hit like and subscribe and ring that notifications bell so you can get updates on when these videos keep coming out. Yeah, other than that, I hope you guys have a great day. Well, thank you. <laughs> I got one line. I'm literally. It's always harder there. than you think. Yeah. You ready, big boy? You ready for me? But for real, you ready? Ah.